A very good morning to you. Thank you so much for being part of this particular show. This is Power Talk. Thank you so much for tuning in to Y254 TV. My name is Ram Aguko, and you're just in time for today's show. Remember, we are coming to you live from our broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. We are also live on our website. That is at www.kbc.co.ke forward slash Y254. Ensure that you engage with us. Today, we have a lot of stuff for you in our conversation of today. And as always, it is a pleasure being with with you. A repeat of this show always airs each and every Thursday at 10 p.m. So tune in tonight also at 10 p.m. right here on Power Talk and get to watch this particular conversation. Well, today it's all about understanding one particular perspective. One thing only and it's uh, 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 we want to talk about modesty, culture, and Christianity. Modesty, culture, and Christianity. Where do we draw the line? Does modesty have an effect on culture? And does culture have an effect on Christianity? Does modesty have an effect on Christianity? And does Christianity have an effect on either modesty or culture? Is it possible for us to draw the line between all these three, uh, maintaining their authenticity, and at the same time ensuring that we don't overlap one for another? Today, we want to understand, does modest, modesty have its limitations? Does culture have its own limitations? And does Christianity also have its own limitations? Is it possible for you to be able to be modest as a Christian? To, at the end of the day, also ensure that you promote your cultural head, heritage as a Christian? How do you do it? Today, we want to have this particular conversation with none other than Pastor Eric Baraza. He is uh, 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 the founder and president of Voice of Truth, which is an outreach ministry uh, with a vision for global impact. Karibu sana, Mchungaji. Asante sana. Also known as Pastor B. <laughs> yeah. Today we'll call him Pastor B. <laughs> Thank you. You're well? I'm doing good. I thank, thank God for being here. Thank you so much for finding time to join me, my brother. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Keep the hashtag going. Is a power talk show on Twitter at Ramaguko and that Y254 channel is the hashtag. Is it possible to balance modesty, culture, and Christianity? And though, if, if you don't understand what you're talking about here, Pastor is going to just give us a brief, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 an opening remarks. Is it possible for us to be able to, to see even where do we draw the line, Pastor? Wow, where do we draw the line? I think that will take us back to the beginning of, of, of everything else. Mm -hmm. I think this whole uh, question of modesty uh, began from the Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. whereby the Bible says that Adam and Eve were naked, yeah. but not ashamed. That is in Genesis chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Then a chapter later, that is Genesis chapter 3, the Bible says that they were naked and ashamed. So now okay. the question is, what happened? In, the, in, 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 in chapter, two, chapter 2, they were naked, naked, but not ashamed. Not ashamed. Chapter 3? Chapter 3, they were naked and but, ashamed. And ashamed. And ashamed. Wow. Uh, so I, I've been asking myself this question. Uh, mm -hmm. In chapter 2, they were naked but not ashamed. But in chapter 3, they were naked and ashamed. So the perspective of nakedness changed when Adam and Eve realized what is bad and what is good. Mm -hmm. So from that particular time when Adam and Eve realized naked and not ashamed is how freely Adam and Eve were walking around the Garden of Eden. But the moment they realized that they were naked, their perspective changed. And now we live in that perspective. Mm. And the perspective the says that uh, there's a level of nakedness that is not comfortable to the people that we associate with or people that we are within, with, uh, within uh, the same environment with. So um, uh, when you're talking about uh, naked and not ashamed, um, is like uh, what level of, na uh, uh, how much skin is too much? And when you're talking about how much skin is too much, we have different cultures. For example, we have cultures whereby they walk naked. Uh, like some cultures, I think in South Africa, whereby they only cover part of themselves. Mm -hmm. That is culturally accepted within their context. Mm -hmm. But when you come to other cultures, uh, like uh, for example, the, uh, the Muslim culture, mm -hmm. uh, whereby they, they are f they're fully known to be properly covered. The buibuis. The buibuis, yeah. You mm -hmm. almost can't recognize someone if they're all dressed in that outfit. Mm -hmm. When you come on the Christian uh, culture, we don't have restriction on what to wear. We don't have a defined dress code in the house of God. Mm -hmm. And whereby now you're free to wear what you deem, to be okay. Mm -hmm. But now, now this brings out the question of now how much skin can I show as a Christian? 
how much is too much and how much is not too much. <laughs> and I think that is where now the conversation gets Modesty, serious. <laughs> culture and Christianity. And today, Power Talk is all about empowering you with information that will be able to, you know, boost you uh, uh, in, in terms of the knowledge you get to be a better person. This is to empower you, to give you the knowledge you need to be better. Mm -hmm. Modesty, culture and Christianity. Pastor, mm -hmm. let me start. I, I, I want to... to, to, to um, distinguish these three uh -huh. when you talk about modesty mm -hmm. what is your definition as a pastor about what modesty is because there's some people <laughs> who you know it's, it's defined in various ways for, uh -huh. uh, and there's some who say what is modest for, for me, me it's not for me yes <laughs> that's true uh -huh. in our cultural context is very true but now we, at the end of the day we have to understand what modesty really is uh if you'll ask me that question i'll say that modesty um Modesty uh, is how you dressed in realization of who you are, mm -hmm. where you are, and who you are with. Okay. I will repeat that again. Modesty is dressing with the realization of who you are, uh -huh. where you are, uh -huh. and who you are with. So it depends on the environment. The environment. And the people around you. And the people you. around you. And also knowing yourself in that context. Uh, you, you know, I see people when they, they, they in some workplaces, they uh -huh. say, when you come for, for example, in, uh, an interview, uh -huh. dress modestly. Yeah. When you go to some workplaces, dress, dress modestly. modestly. When you go to church, dress modestly. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, and then so many people wonder then what is this modest dressing? Because if I put on a, a, a skirt for a lady mm -hmm. that is, uh, 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 you know, at, at this level, they will say uh, it is it's, modest for me. Uh -huh. But that's not the case. So I, I think um, um, we have places whereby they have defined dress codes. Mm -hmm. For example, when you go to uh, different organizations, they have a defined dress code. Mm -hmm. uh, some have even come up with colors, like you're supposed to come in black and blue. Yes. That is their defined dress code. When you go to certain churches, they have defined dress code, uh, where they'll say that you're supposed to wear white and uh, a different color. That mm -hmm. is defined. Mm -hmm. But now you walk in spaces whereby the dress code is not defined. Therefore, it's left to the person to the deem truth. what is necessary within that environment. So when you're talking about modesty, is the realization within yourself of, number one, who am I? For example, being a pastor, there's a way I cannot dress and be okay within myself. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, yes. Uh, being a pastor, there's a way I can dress that even I myself feel like, mm -mm, like something can you, is... Can you put on jeans? I, I definitely can, but uh, th there comes out to the little details, uh, what kind of jeans. You know, there's those tight uh, jeans that hug your skin that you can't even tell the difference between the two. Uh -huh. So, um, so within myself, how okay am I with wearing these kind of clothes? So you have to have an awareness of who you are in the society and what is the expectation? There are these jeans that have, uh, I don't, have I don't know, uh, how, 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 how do I describe them? Adi, naitwa nini? Rugged. Thank you, Timothy. Rugged. Uh -huh. rugged. Can you put on those ones? Can I put on rugged? Um, is it modest? <laughs> Can I put on rugged? Uh, that's a very interesting question. Uh, so it comes now down to personal convictions. Uh -huh. uh, what is your conviction? Uh -huh. If my conviction is that if I put on this rugged, it may not necessarily be wrong to put on rugged, but what perception are people having of me in regards to who I am in the society? If you, um, Pastor, you, Pastor B, you deal with youths uh -huh. and you deal with so many people. I'm, I'm, I'm where you, you, you walk around schools uh -huh. and, uh, you know, to, to, you speak to so many students. Mm -hmm. Y254 is a youth station uh -huh. and our focus are the same, same people you deal with. Uh -huh. When you meet somebody on the streets of Nairobi with uh, a particular kind of dress code, could be that rugged jeans uh -huh. as a lady or a gentleman uh -huh. with that short skirt, you know, what would be your, your definition of what? modesty is for a youth now what modesty is for a youth yes. um you know it's not uh, like we can cast a stone and say that this is modesty you, you cannot say that this you ca is yeah, not i modesty. cannot say that uh, that jean is modesty or that skirt is modesty and that's why i'm saying that it first has to start with the awareness of who you are and your personal conviction okay. like uh, what would be deemed modesty in the church may not be necessarily deemed modesty in the club so that brings in the question oh, of, of environment. Of course. of course, yeah. You won't go with a suit and a tie yeah. in a club trying the, the, the to bust a move. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a talk a kazi. I'm a talk a kazi. Actually, if you take it, dogo. Actually, if you take it, dogo. So yeah. You, yeah, it depends with uh, the environment 
and understanding who you are and the perception of the society of yourself and based on the position you hold in society. So for a youth, I wouldn't say that putting on rugged uh, is immodesty, mm -hmm. but now it goes down to that personal conviction. As a young person, when I put on this uh, uh, rugged jeans, uh, what perception am I giving of the people within my environment? But, but you know, if you're saying it depends, uh, you're saying it depends on the environment mm -hmm. and it depends on an individual. Uh -huh. and, and, and of course, Pastor B, we are all raised in different uh, yeah, environments. It's true. Thereby making us different individuals. Mm -hmm. So some people may, may want, and, and you see, in the work environment nowadays, mm -hmm. we see many youths come up. Uh, of course, before it was not acceptable. It does not seem to be neat or mm -hmm. official. A, a young man comes into studio or to work with the raster. And then, uh, the, 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 you know, before it would be like, no, you cannot do that. But nowadays, it's, it's changing. Yeah. You know, because before they would say that that is not modest. But now it's changing. But now it's changing. Mm -hmm. What is this conversation that you're talking about? If you are saying that, it depends on a particular individual, then everything is permissible. Uh, you can say that uh, everything is permissible, and I think we live in a very permissive uh, uh, time whereby things are so permissible. And I think uh, I'll reference what Paul says, that everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Uh-huh, okay. It might be permissible, but it's not beneficial. And beneficial in the, f in the, in the aspect that it may not be edifying, uh, uh, particularly to the person who is wearing it, and to the person who is looking at him. Mm -hmm. So we live in a culture whereby uh, when you say that it depends on an individual person, now that brings us down now to the personal conviction. For example, in the Christian context, uh, yeah. uh, when the Bible says in the book of Psalms 89 that God is greatly to be praised and feared in the assembly of saints, yeah. it means that there's a, there's a way you approach God in worship that in as much as it comes down to personal conviction, yeah. there's a way you can dress that uh, it goes to a point where by now you are over, uh, you're misusing your personal right when it comes to uh, individual convictions. Okay. There's a way I cannot appear in church and expect everybody else to be okay with me. In, in, so so th there has to be a limit. There has to be a limit. And if we don't have limits, then uh, I don't think there will be any gauge to judge what is right and wrong. There are families that prohibit some, their children from putting on certain clothes uh -huh. certain times, uh -huh. certain ways. Mm -hmm. Is that also something that uh, you would subscribe to? Uh, basically, it also depends with a, uh, with a parent. I think we live in a very... Uh, I don't know if I'll be allowed to use the word liberal. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in a very liberal culture whereby we have the rights. And there was, uh, recently there was this match called My Dress, My Choice. My Dress, My Choice. And I know this happened out of some incident that happened and people are carrying those uh, things and saying My Dress, My Choice. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had some very uh, unfortunate incidents as well by someone was stripped naked because of the way they were dressed, that it was not good within the, the context of the culture or maybe it was not accepted within the public. So um, there are those parents who have put restriction on their kids on what they can or cannot wear. And I think this one now, now it narrows down to the parenting now. What style of parenting? Like different parents uh, have different rules. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when you're growing up in my home, like my, ba my, 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 my dad will not allow my sister to wear a trouser. Mm -hmm. And I remember him telling her outrightly that uh, the only time you're allowed to wear trousers is mm -hmm. when you're in your husband's house. Okay. So then uh, I may okay. not understand from what context he mm -hmm. was saying it, mm -hmm. but this was his clear rule when it comes to his house. As long as it's not in his house. As long as it's not in his house. She can do that elsewhere else, but as, as long as it's not in his house. And also we, we also miss a point here when it comes to modesty. Uh, when we start putting on these do's and don'ts, mm -hmm. we become legalistic in a sense. Okay. Uh, we also have churches where uh, we have... Uh, there's a church uh, sometimes back that even had uh, pictures on the on the door mm. of the clothes you're not allowed to <laughs> enter with in the service. But, but, but actually, it's, it's, it's still there. There are many churches that say uh, women should not go to church with, with trousers. trousers. Yeah, they're definitely there. They're definitely there. You are a pastor. Uh -huh. Would you say that should be the case? Would you? Are you subscribing to it? What is your? You can add in your voice on that. Um, I will add in my voice on that uh, in the sense that uh, uh, modesty cannot really be defined by the do's and don'ts, but, but giving principles that are supposed to guide the person or not to dress, then they can draw from that particular principle what is right and wrong. For example, number one as a Christian, when I dress like this, what is my testimony as a Christian? There's a way I will dress, but there will not be any difference between me and an unbeliever. Yeah. That is one. That is a testimony of our faith. So when I dress like this, are people able to see, as believers, the Bible says that you are the written epistles. Yeah. When people see you, can they see the Christ in you? And the Bible says that Jesus saves, and when he saves, I believe he saves to the utmost. 
he doesn't save you and uh, not save your wardrobe. <laughs> what, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? He, he doesn't save you <laughs> and leave the wardrobe aside. The old, are you saying the wardrobe also has to be saved? Oh, basically what I believe, uh, uh, this one, uh, it's not something that happens immediately. You don't like yeah. walk into a church, you've been uh -huh. putting on ragged for the past God knows how long. Then you walk into a church, you've been saved, and the next day you have suits and all these nice and clothes mm. that are deemed to be modest. It's, it's a journey that happens. So if, if, you're, if you get born again, uh -huh. or you're, you say you're a Christian, uh -huh. uh, you claim to be born again, uh -huh. even the, the clothes, your wardrobe has to be born again. If I may say so, yes. Okay, just uh, you know, we, we, we are, we've had this uh, saying, I know you've heard about it, where they say, come as you are. Of course. Have you heard something like that? Yes, yes, yes. Come as you are. Yeah. But one thing we tend to forget is that come as you are is an invitation for sinners and not a description of how saints are to attend the Lord's service. <laughs> so for, for, for the born again, don't just come as you yeah, are. Yeah. So th this one is an invitation for sinners because they don't know better. But if you know better, you do better. So come as you are, in a, it, in a sense, is an invitation for sinners to come. Mm -hmm. And once they have come, they change. They are able to be fed on the right word. And this word is able to transform them from the inside out. So modest dressing starts from the inside before it gets out. And that's why I believe that before we start talking about modesty in the Christian context, mm -hmm. we, have to talk about, uh, we have to talk about it from a biblical perspective, whereby we have to talk about it, what does it mean for a Christian to be modest? Because Paul talks about uh, women should be dressed in modesty. So yes. once you get into the church now, you're able to learn as a Christian, how am I conveying the testimony of my faith? There are families that uh, are having struggles with the, their children uh -huh. as we speak. Their children are now going to be rebellious. Children are saying that, no, mom and dad, you cannot control how I dress. Yeah. I, 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 I have freedom. I have my own rights to choose the kind of dress dress code that I, that, that, that I want. I have my own freedom and rights to even choose the kind of hairstyle. You know, there are people who, mm -hmm. who say uh, for a man, uh, but a, a father will, will see the son and say, uh -huh. you know, it, it's a culture. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's about modesty. They say you, you don't look modest the way you are. Mm -hmm. Or there's this, cha there's this young man who wants to have a rasta. Mm -hmm. And then the parents are like, no, you cannot have this rasta. How, how should the youths now mm -hmm. conceive all this information? Because it's now, it, 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 it used to feel like they are being infringed, like their, their, their rights, rights are, are being, being taken infringed. away. Yes. I think um, um, I think now that comes back now to parenting. As a parent, what are the values that you've instilled in your child when they are growing? The Bible says that raise up a child in the way they should go. That when they're old, they're not able to depart from those ways. And as Swahili uh, uh, walisema, uh, mti mkunje ungali mbichi. I hope that is what it says. Huh? Mm. Mti mkunje ungali mbichi. So mm. there's, uh, change is not something that happens once. It's not... Uh, instant it's very gradual so if, you, if if like you're trying to train your child on how to dress i think it has to start at an age whereby they're able to make these changes you don't just wake up uh, one day then you're telling uh, your your teen that now you're not supposed to have this kind of hairstyle in my house uh. though, though some parents do that for uh -huh. some reasons but i think it starts from how are you raising them up but now of which brings me to the, my next question how are you raising them yes Train up a child according to how you want them to be and mm -hmm. they will not depart from it. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. Yet, we have this notion and perspective that exists, and I'm sure you've heard of it, mm -hmm. that wakati wenyu, siyo wakati wetu. Yeah, times have changed. The times have changed. <laughs> and it's true. How things were before is not it's how not things same. are now. It's not the same. It's true. Then? Yeah, things have really changed. Like, uh, for example, suits, huh? Uh, you know, uh, our, our parents, their suits used to be extra large. They were, they were very baggy, <laughs> if I use the word baggy, uh, yeah. with all the due respect. Yes, yes, but yes. now, as time goes by, uh, I, I don't know if you're running out of material or... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if you're running out of material. I think you're running out of material. I, I think you're running out of materials, <laughs> or they're becoming more expensive. So in that time, they used to have at least enough space for ventilation. Mm. But you realize now, this with, as time goes by, we rarely have even space to breathe within our suits. They're called slim fit. Slim fit, yeah, slim fit now. You yes. see, in that time, these things never existed. But in our time now, mm -hmm. for you to look classy and in tune with times, yes. you have to show up in a slim fit suit. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, that is the time we're living in today. Yeah. Like, for example, even the skirts. Uh, the, in the olden times, uh, you're considered to be modest if your skirt does not touch your, uh, your ankle. Yeah, but, but back then, if your, if your skirt come in a fagia... You're very modest. 
But come if I give you are not modest. But nowadays you see they, it even, they even propose you for marriage. They even, oh, definitely, <laughs> they even propose you for marriage. And that was also one of the considerations when her parents are trying to suggest who to marry. Uh, like uh, you see that lady, I love the way she dressed. Yeah. She seemed to be like a good person. Uh -huh. So now, but now we no longer wear those. It's very rare. So nowadays it has gone even past the knees. And uh, my question is, are we <laughs> running out of material still? So uh -huh. I think the times have changed, whereby even our dressing has changed. But now if, with all these changes, huh, is when now we come to now, how much skin is too much. <laughs> and that is where now this conversation gets uh, very touchy. Because uh, to some extent we talk about this and then we become legalistic. Whereby yeah. now we put on rules that are of men on what to and what not to do. Mm. So when it comes to now this how much skin is too much skin, now it comes back to uh, what is my cultural context. Mm -hmm. Number one, I started by saying that modesty is when you dress with the respect for yourself, for God, and for those around you. Mm -hmm. Number one, if I put on a short skirt, uh, for example, uh, in the context of whereby I'm meeting elderly people, does it show respect to them? That is the first thing. The other thing is that uh, when I dress like this in a given environment, does it honor the occasion? Uh, for example, there was this uh, guy who had been married to the wife for like uh, 23 years, and now it was a uh, time they were celebrating their 23rd anniversary. Mm. So the wife calls the guys like, uh, today I'm going to make reservations at the hotel, but because you'll be coming late from work, I'll go ahead and make reservations. So the guy went to work, but because he was leaving late mm. and he had to pass through his tennis uh, game, mm. he put on his tennis clothes and went to the tennis game. Then after he finished, mm. he went straight to the hotel for the dinner. Okay. So this guy showed up in his tennis outfit, huh? uh, the short and the, mm. his tennis outfit and, uh, for uh, a uh, dinner. Uh, uh, kofia. Yeah, yeah. And, the kofia. And, yeah. The, and, the, and the wife is at the dinner expecting the husband to come for the, the celebration suit. of the 23rd anniversary. So was this guy wrong to dress like this? No. Why? Because he just came straight from the tennis game. But, but, but the, wife, the wife will argue. You shouldn't have to, you should Yeah, yeah. So now, now the wife, will, uh, the wife will, will ask you, how dare you come dressed like this on such an important occasion? So occasions also dictate what am I supposed to wear? So because this guy showed up in tennis shoes, it does not mean he does not love the wife. He does. But my dressing communicates that I did not take this occasion as important enough to dress it up or to dress up for it. So sometimes uh, our dressing is supposed to be a show of reverence for the occasion with which we are participant. For mm -hmm. example, if you're invited to the, to the White House, or let's uh, say to the State House, yeah. uh, for a state dinner with the President, mm -hmm. uh, His Excellency, Uhuru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. and you show up in uh, ragged, ragged jeans mm -hmm. uh, to the state dinner, yeah. how will that be perceived? Number one, it would be a show of disrespect for the occasion and the presidency. And that's what people need to understand. You, we need to understand you should dress accord, in accordance to the occasion. To the occasion. Yeah. There's an occasion that calls for you to dress in ragged. There's an occasion that calls for you to dress in a suit. Like, for example, you don't go to an interview <laughs> in ragged. What if someone just, it's not their style. They just don't know how to put on that suit. But you see, it they may don't not... know how to put on that casual. <laughs> for example, I have tried jeans, <laughs> and that is, now, that is now your test. That is your personal conviction. But now, the occasion, there'll be an occasion that now necessitates a given dress code. For example, when you go for an interview, you don't come the way you feel like. You come in mind with how your interviewer is going to perceive you. If someone showed up in an interview and then they came in shorts, number one, I think they have, they have not taken this job interview seriously and so they just showed up. Number two, they have no respect for me. And number three, mm. Mm. were they aware of where they were going? So I think there are some occasions and events and places that are going to dictate a defined dress code. Now, I want us to touch on relationships. Uh -huh. <laughs> and this is where uh, things get rough. Uh -huh. Let me give a, a, a case scenario because I've, I, I've seen one, one particular uh, uh, real life situation. Mm -hmm. This lady brings in a guy to meet the parent. Mm -hmm. The guy is uh, in dreadlocks, you know, uh, and as you see nowadays, the language is so different. Yeah, sheng yeah, and sheng. all the slang. Yeah, slang, <laughs> you know, my yangs, you bad yeah, things, babe. you tells you nini. <laughs> 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 the guy, they, they knock on the door and the father chases this man away. You cannot, uh, and the father says, you cannot bring a man in dreadlocks in my house. Mm -hmm. Your voice on that? Wow. <laughs> you cannot bring a man uh, with dreadlocks. dreadlocks in the house no. as a prospective husband. Husband. Wow. 
So um, I, I want to believe that uh, one thing that parents also need to understand is that we live in a different dispensation, that things have changed. I think we have to all agree that things have changed. Uh, their measurements on suit is not the same. Yeah. Uh, their hairstyle is definitely not the same. We didn't have Mohawk during that time. Yeah, Mo we didn't I, have. I remember Mohawk. <laughs> my, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have Moh Mohawks during the times. Huh? Yeah. We didn't have these hairstyles huh, that are very elaborate and distinguished during their times. In fact, yeah. they didn't even go to saloons, maybe in those times. Mm. But now things have changed, and times have changed, and because times have changed, we have to look at things now from a different perspective. Now, wh what should a parent do now? What should a parent do? Secondly, what should that lady do? Uh, what a parent Let's start with the parent. The parent. The parent yeah. should understand, one, times have changed. Yeah. And therefore, look at the prospective husband to be within the context of the times. Mm. That is the first thing. Uh, the lady now, huh? Mm. Uh, the lady now has to understand uh, what does the occasion calls for. If I'm taking my jama to meet my parents, yeah. he has to dress in a way that shows respect for himself. I'm a, uh, yeah, ni rasta. Yeah, ni rasta. The, 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 you know, the, uh, you cannot cha unless you, cannot you shave. shave uh, <laughs> you, shave. You, cannot cha you cannot change that. That, that. that is the rasta. You know, you're and the parent will say, "Umen letea muzi kwa nyumba." Because and also, uh, um, <laughs> it also <laughs> comes from a, a particular school of thought. Huh? Yes, uh, there are those people who believe that if someone has dreadlocks, they are not straightforward people like probably mm. they're thieves or they're cons mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's that perception there's that school of thought and that school of thought that think that if you come in jeans you're not a guy of integrity mm. so there are these schools of thoughts and i think we have to come to a point whereby we, we we bring all these schools of thoughts together and understand how how are we supposed to look at this within the changing times for example now we even have pastors today with dreadlocks i don't know if you've, if you've seen all yeah, that. yeah i have i have we do right yeah. we now have pastors with dreadlocks before you could not be a pastor in any church with dreadlocks because number one it's not a good image for the ministry or rather the church and now and, and now that you do okay <laughs> be, before we, we get there uh -huh. i'll advise this lady advice to this lady number one the lady now has to uh, i believe the gentleman understand where he's going that is one because the occasion that you attend dictates the kind of dressing. But now it's not dressing, now it's the hair. Mm. So does the gentleman <laughs> shave? <laughs> should now, he shave? Should he shave? Simply because he's going to meet the father-in-law. Mm. I don't think the gentleman should shave. Mm. Uh, the lady now has to go before the, 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 the gentleman. Huh? Uh, before, he, the way. before his arrival. Before his arrival. Like the John the Baptist will prepare the way for the coming of the Messiah. <laughs> she has to play the role of John the Baptist and go and talk to the parents like, excuse me, dad, I'm bringing so-and-so home, hey. but you have to understand this about so-and-so. This guy has dreadlocks. Then the father is able hey. to voice his, uh, his perception on that, how he looks at him. Then the lady, uh, you know, the father has these different schools of thoughts and ideas like these people are like this and this. Now the lady is able to convince the dad, I know we think that these people are like this and that, but this is who he is. And if it's a pa father who has his, uh, the best interest of the daughter at heart and understand, we're like, okay, let him come. Then from there, you're able to see, uh, was my judgment on him based on his hairstyle true or not? Because now you're able to interact with the person and at least get to know them. And one thing about uh, this uh, putting do's and don'ts on dress code, it denies an opportunity to know the people beyond their dress. Because mm -hmm. I, will, I, will, I, will, I will block you based on how you dress, even without giving you a chance, so that I can interact with you and know that your dressing does not define who you are. If it, it even happens even amongst youths ourselves, uh -huh. when we are uh, interacting with, you know, amongst each other, uh -huh. we, tend to, we, we tend to judge each mm -hmm. other based on the person who is, who, who, who is dressed in a particular way mm -hmm. or who has this a certain kind of hairstyle. Mm -hmm which should not be the case, mm -hmm. even amongst ourselves. And that's why some people will say, ah, I cannot accept a proposal from a guy who is dressing yeah. such and, a and thing. And I think it, it's very unfortunate because we don't give them, we don't allow ourselves to know them be beyond mm. their dress code or probably their, their hairstyle. And I think uh, it becomes unfair because you dismiss me based on what I'm dressed without knowing the kind of heart that I carry. So it's always good to give them room. I will call the uh, uh, benefit of a doubt to at least know them before you dismiss them based on how they dress or how they look like. So wow, I think the wow. lady should go ahead mm -hmm. and talk to the dad about these guys. Like he puts on, he has dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. uh, probably come from that culture. You know, there's a culture, there's a Safarian culture, right? Yeah. It's a culture on its own. It has mm -hmm. its own right. He's Arab Safarian, probably. Mm -hmm. And this is what they believe. But this person is not who you may think him to be. So just give 
room for time so that you can know him. Then from there, you're able to judge him, not based on how he looks like, mm -hmm. but who he is. So that is, so the parents should be flexible. The parents should be listen. flexible to understand, number one, times mm -hmm. have changed. And number two, it is very unfair to judge someone now, based on how now, they look. Sometimes the parent has been flexible. Amekuja, uh amekukaribisha, -huh. umuongea, and the parent still says no. What should the, this lady do? Uh, now the parent has been flexible. <laughs> and I said no. <laughs> I, said, I said no. Should the lady now be flexible? Wow. So I think, I, th <laughs> I, I think no parenting is rightful. Her rightful mind yeah. will dismiss a potential son or daughter-in-law uh -huh. based on how they're dressed. That would be very unfortunate and probably okay. unfair. Uh -huh. And I think a parent, for a parent to say no, it has to be beyond the dress. It has a, to a, be. a parent will say that I, I, I am your father, I am your mother. And you cannot bring someone like Wow. Then that's when the rubber now meets the road. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I, I want to give a different case scenario here. Uh -huh. uh, there is a gentleman outside there. You know, it's, it's all about understanding uh, modesty, culture. Christian culture. Mm. There's, some, there's, some, there's a gentleman who is uh, uh, struggling, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure, with a particular case whereby he is of a particular uh, belief system mm -hmm. that um, an attack on Christian and by her party have have I have I have I have I also heard that uh, yeah. <laughs> when I was yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, you did that yes I, I did like uh, but I've been raised up in a conservative Christian family ah. and conservative in the sense that everything you did had to be have a reference from the scripture uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know that those who come from such conservative families and very cultured, huh? like your parents will, will tell you, uh, mm. uh, ladies are dressed like this, uh, like that and that. So when I was growing up, I used to have this perception that I want a lady that dresses a skirt this long. Yeah, I want yeah. a lady that has this hairstyle. Mm -hmm. I want a lady that's not put on makeup. I want her yeah. natural. <laughs> what should you do? This guy believes. This guy believes. Uh -huh. Number one, this is the way you dress. I want those long dresses. Long dresses no sir. trousers. Uh -huh. No makeup. No makeup. I don't want makeup. Three, you don't put on those wigs. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> because there's some, you know, those ladies, they, it, okay, for me, I find it to be scary when they... It's, they, it's, they remove them. They remove them. It's a totally different person. Different person. Kisha will call all of a sudden. Except. It's a kind of, kind of planes. Uh -huh. <laughs> how, how should uh, men handle such kind of things now? Because now these are differences in, in, in regards to culture. And, and uh, times. Uh, yeah. But, but basically now it comes back to an individual. Or like we all have different preferences and choices. Mm. Uh, for example, what I prefer may not be necessarily what you prefer. Mm. And what you prefer may not be what I prefer. And for a man, like when I was growing up, I had this uh, perception that I needed someone who dresses like this or mm. someone who puts on, yeah, yeah. Uh, who puts on this and this. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think, um, mm. and, and I think it's, it's important to understand that now this one comes to now personal conviction. Mm. Uh, like I want my wife to look like this. And I heard that. But now with time, you realize that that changed because I realized when living at different times. Mm -hmm. So now I didn't necessarily want uh, to define how long the skirt should be or how, uh, how tight the trouser should be. I needed to understand that uh, this uh, person is not necessarily what they're dressed, is who they are. Ah. Yeah. So and for, 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 uh, sorry for cutting you short, but as you add on, to on top of that, this gentleman has brought in this lady to the family mm -hmm. because you, at some point you became flexible oh yeah yeah i Correct? did you became flexible <laughs> and that's why i'm married <laughs> <laughs> come on <laughs> are you saying if you're not flexible you won't be married uh, but i don't know but uh, that's why i'm married because if, if i was looking for someone with a long skirt you realize huh? it's very hard now to find someone with skirts that goes to their to their uncles so if, the, if, if, so if that was my standard then do you think i'll have gotten a wife by now what if, <laughs> what if this, this, this guy decides to be flexible? They are flexible. Uh -huh. But the parents are not. The parents will say, this is not like Mschana, and I have Vai Hivi, Hana Hi, Hana Hiyo. You've, you've brought in uh, some, some ladies, for some of us, they call them slay queens or, yeah. or, 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 or whatnot, for lack of a better <laughs> term, uh -huh. of which that's also controversial. But you've brought in that light-skinned lady with the makeup from head to toe to the parent this one belongs in the streets this one is not a wife material mm. what do you think i think uh i think when it comes to makeup and modesty there has to be moderation mm -hmm. and moderation talks about the limit uh so that you don't abuse the liberty of our times huh? and abuse mm -hmm. comes from abnormal use 
What, what do you mean by abnormal use? Ah, something, is, something is termed as abuse when it's used abnormally. In other words, it's been used beyond the extent that is expected. Okay. For instance, um, um, in terms of like a makeup, huh? Mm. There's a level of makeup that goes beyond what would be deemed as necessary. <laughs> okay. Um, like uh, uh, there's a statement I, I've used in the in the book uh, whereby I'm describing a scenario that I experienced. I went to one of these churches for a Sunday morning service, mm. and the lady who was leading praise and worship was dressed in a skirt that does not even qualify to be called a skirt. And, and her lips, uh, are <laughs> 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 when I say it, it doesn't qualify to be called a skirt, <laughs> I think we can call it mini, micro mini skirt or rather mini skirt. Or micro mini, not My, just a mini. No, uh, not just a mini. So th there has to be moderation. Huh? Mm -hmm. There has to be moderation. Like in terms of makeup, uh, there's that makeup that you say, I think you went a little bit too, too far. Much. Yeah, too this far. was not necessary. Yeah. Um, when it comes to how short, uh, you say, uh, I think you went a little bit too far you'll have done better. Mm -hmm. So there has to be moderation. But, but, but now here, he, 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 here comes the question, how, how far is too far? You know, <laughs> you wanna, how far is too far? How, how short is too short? Too short. And I think now that's when we always push the envelope. Like uh, how far is too far and how short is too short? Now, same question. Uh -huh. What should the parents do? Your son has brought you a lady that is like that, makeup, <laughs> shortcuts, uh, nini nini. Uh -huh. What should a parent do? And for a son, what do you do? How, who should be flexible for who and how should each react? Let's start with the parent. Wow, I think this one calls now for handshake. <laughs> 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 I think oh this one calls goodness. for compromise, or rather handshake <laughs> in, our, in our context. Huh? Yeah. I think this calls for compromise, whereby we have to, we have what you call the bare, it's called bare minimum. Huh? Mm -hmm. Uh, the, bare <laughs> the bare minimum. Huh? Yes. Uh, this is the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, the parents has to come to a, cons uh, to a compromise with the, with, the, with the daughter, or rather the son, who is trying to introduce someone that he may not like based on how they dress or how they appear. So the parent has to understand, number mm -hmm. one, I'll just add, say that, mm -hmm. the times are different. But now with the times changing, there has to be a limit on how far is too far and how short is too short. Yes. And that is when I say now it calls now for moderation on the part of the person who is perceived as... The, the, the violator of these uh, uh, expectations. Huh? Mm -hmm. And I think that now comes to the person. And I think, uh, I don't think anyone in their rightful mind, I want to believe, mm. will go to his father-in-law in such kind of dressing. Because number one, you have to show respect for them. Yes. Right? Yes. So if you know I'm going to meet my father-in-law, I'm very sure no man in his rightful mind will go to their father-in-law in some dressing. Uh -huh. So this one now brings us to what is the occasion? Mm -hmm. So the occasion does not call for this short. It might be short, but it doesn't have to be this short. So this dressing, does it match the occasion? So that is the first question. If it does not match the occasion, then I have to revise my dressing. So if I'm going no. to see my father-in-law, that's what you see when people are going to like uh, Rurashio or probably to meet their in-laws, there's a defined dress code. When you know Vitenge. And he doesn't put on vitengas from uh, January. Actually, yeah? most, it's an occasion. Mostly, I've, I've, I've never seen any other. Have you seen any other? No. I think it's vitengas mostly. Mostly it's vitengas. And that's not why it's vitengas, because this is how it's culturally perceived. At, even when, 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 you, when people start suspecting that there's something going on between you and lady, they'll always ask this question. I don't know if you've been asked that question. Yeah. Huh? I, 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 I have. Okay. Or you're the one who's been asking. It's either Vitenge <laughs> or Suti So it's either Vitenge or Suti because the occasion calls for that. Uh -huh. So we have to understand what is the occasion. So in the question of the, of the daughter-in-law bringing this guy in this dress code, I want to believe that this guy understands the occasion. And if he goes in this kind of way, then probably he didn't understand the occasion. And the occasion calls for a defined dress code. Okay. Yeah, so I think now it's understanding the occasion. So if the guy goes there like that, then the blame is on him. He didn't now, understand the occasion. Now, there are people who believe. Let me, let, now, let's come up from the family setting to the business setting. To the business setting. Uh, uh, in, in a workplace, there are people who believe that if I put on a particular outfit and you have a problem with it, that is not my problem. It's it your is your problem, so deal with it. It's true. <laughs> It's true. And, uh, and that is why I think, uh, just so that you don't offend someone, that's why I think some organizations have come up with defined dress codes. Okay. We even have the casual fighters uh, in yeah, some yeah, companies. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 have, we, have, 
we have casual fighters. Uh -huh. And the reason is because uh -huh. clothes do communicate. In fact, clothes say more than words will ever say. There's a way uh, I can dress to say something that I'm not saying with words. Now. So in the, in the business setup, uh, uh -huh. there's a defined dress code that shows that I've come to work. Wonderful. I want us to, to, to give you another, another example uh -huh. here. But now this one goes to uh, either men or women, depending on the case scenario. Um, there are, of course, let me start with the, the ladies. There are many ladies who want to impress. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. But now for you to impress, you have to... I don't know. <laughs> I've also been impressed. <laughs> <laughs> You've been impressed? Yeah, I've been impressed. <laughs> there are ladies who want to impress. But now, um, in, in order for them to do that, they will have to, you know, uh, put in some effort. Oh, yeah. And you will see that, hey, this lady used to dress like this before. But, but now, now they're dressing like this uh, today. Why the change? Should we, um, uh, you know, do that? When a lady has a crush on a particular gentleman. She dresses a particular way. She dresses in a particular way. To get his attention. Yes. She, she will want to put on that short skirt. A pite mbeleake kidogo. At least aonekane. If a lady is interested in, in a certain pastor. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going back to the pastors. Eh? Pulpit. <laughs> at, at least uh, I end up with a pite mbeleake kidogo. I end up with a pite <laughs> uh, we are going to do that. You're going to answer that, that question after this break. Sour, sour. How should we be, <laughs> behave? Especially when it comes to, okay, you, you want to impress somebody. How should you, uh, how, how far is too far? And then after this break, you're also going to tell us more about modesty in terms of the tongue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we have talked about modesty in terms of dressing. Mm. But can we be more honest even in our speech? In, in our speech? Mm. Can modesty also imply there? Mm. And also, what a presentation of Kanisa. Wow. Out of prison worship. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. Uh, this, is very, this is very sensitive. Eh? <laughs> After this break, let's take a short, a short break, but keep your questions coming in on our Facebook page, Y254 is where you can find us. The hashtag is, y in the mo is, the hashtag is Power Talk Show at Ram Aguko, and that Y254 channel is where we are. This is Power Talk. We'll take a short break. We'll be back in a bit. Why two five four? Imagine. Right, and we are back with this conversation. This is all about understanding about uh, modesty, Christianity, and culture. <coughs> We have uh, done modesty and a bit of Christianity, uh, but before we finish on that and then touch on culture, uh, I'm with uh, you know Eric ba Baraza. He is a pastor uh, uh, dealing with uh, you know talking to us about this particular conversation here. So ensure that you continue talking to us on our social media handles. The hashtag is one. It's Power Talk Show at Ramaguko and at White Trevor Channel. Lona Papa Felix and Jimmy and Asuma following. Uh, 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 with Pastor Eric, and some American for Eric Alafa Kratik. Wow, <laughs> I hope that's a good thing. Eh? That, that's, that's it's a, a good thing. thing. A tick, that's a, that's yeah, yeah. thank good. you so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's encouraging. Yeah, it thank is. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, now, we are talking about culture, and uh, before we went on, on, on that break, you were talking about how you know uh, uh, modesty is and, and what we, sh we should and should not do. Mm. I want us to touch on the, on, on, on the example that I've given. Trying to, and they normally say, dress to kill. Wow. Dress to impress. <laughs> what are the limits here? Dress to kill. Wow, that, that sounds dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> of course, not literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not literally. A dress to kill. Mm. And, and I think uh, uh, we have what you call the social pressure mm -hmm. and the trends of our times. Because, uh, uh, you know, we have, uh, our fashion keeps changing. Huh? Uh, we also need to appear fashionable in our culture today. You want to dress in a way that uh, your prospective guy will see that you have a test for fashion. Yeah. Yeah. And which puts a lot of pressure, especially on ladies, because they want to impress. Mm -hmm. And uh, largely, from a biological perspective, men are very visual. Yeah. Uh, men are very visual, and we're visual beings. Even the Bible says in the book of Matthew 5, 28, we are very visual, that whoever mm -hmm. looks at a woman and lasts for her, he has already committed that with his heart. Mm -hmm. So the Bible recognizes the visual aspect of men. Mm -hmm. And because men are visual, ladies have realized this is the way to get their attention. 
Mm. So being a visual being, for me to get your attention, number one, I have to look appealing, if not attractive. But, but, but that, that, should that be the case? Um, one thing I believe about this is that uh, what, what gets his attention is what will keep his attention. Powerful, powerful. Uh, <laughs> what gets his attention uh -huh. is what will keep his attention. Wow. So if what got his attention was your short skirt, you will need to put on short skirts to sustain a relationship. Because <laughs> what gets his side is what keeps it going. Ladies, <laughs> where is the sunshine? <laughs> <laughs> huh? you, what gets his attention is, is what, what keeps it. Is what so keeps it. It, it means we need to be re really concerned about how, what actually attracts mm. us to our partners mm. and what attracts them to us. Yeah, so uh, one thing, and I think men, we also have perspectives on how women's dress. Uh, there those, there's a school of thought for men that think that ladies who dress in a particular way, they're very easy going if I may use that term with a lot of respect. Mm. Uh, we say that because they're dressed like that, they look like they're easygoing. Mm -hmm. And because they're easygoing, I always tell my friends, uh, don't, if, don't, if you dress like a buffet, like if, you dress, if you dress like a buffet, don't be surprised when men treat you like a piece of meat. Hey. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to repeat that without uh, anyone throwing stones in the studio. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you dress like a buffet, don't be surprised yeah. when men treat you like a piece of meat. The invitation that you issued, the invitation that you give is what lays the carpet of welcome. So hey. if uh -huh. uh, so if your attention, if, if, if you're dressing like this to get his attention with a short skirt, you will need short skirts to maintain this relationship. And that is why you see some ladies, they get married, mm. and their husband was always attracted to them with their short skirts. By the time they change their dress code, their husband start looking elsewhere because what got his attention is not what he has at home. <laughs> wow. And, and I think it takes, it takes wisdom for you to understand that it doesn't have to be my short skirt that attracts him to him, but my personality. But what about trends? Yeah, trends. And I think there's that pressure whereby we want to look the part. We want to look like we're in terms with the trends yeah, of our yeah, times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then how do you balance between what's trending? What does it matter on a vacama show? Kama show show. And I think there's a, there are people <laughs> who are actually told that uh, umeva kama show show because yeah. you are not uh, looking like the They say like you are a very young lady, <laughs> but you are dressing like an old woman. Yeah. And, and I think there's a, uh, there, there are those men who want that kind of a lady and mm -hmm. there are those men that want this kind of a lady. Mm. There's a man who is attracted or rather finds ladies with short skirts very appealing. Because to them, it keeps their attention. And there's this man who <laughs> finds ladies in long uh, dresses very appealing. Mm. So number one, uh, the pressure of dressing in a particular way, it mm. may work for you mm -hmm. or work against you. Okay. So it will work for you in the sense that you'll mm. get his attention. Right? Yeah. So now you have his attention, now he's all yours. But the problem is, is that what drew him to you? If that is what drew him to you, then you'll need that thing to sustain him in that relationship. So you dare not change. Because when you change, then there's you've no future for this relationship. So yeah. you've lost him. So that is one thing. It may work for you there, but it may not be sustainable. So select what you want carefully. Yeah. Because select, what, yeah. what you've selected is what you need to sustain it. It's true. So you have to decide what is, what is he being drawn to me? What is it that is drawing him? If mm -hmm. it's your dress code, then you have to maintain it to sustain mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if it's your personality, then... Uh, then you don't need to be worried about the trends in, in, in terms of dress code change because he didn't, he didn't get your attention or he didn't get his attention because of what you're wearing, but because of who you are. But now, at, at the end of the day, <coughs> there's something that uh, I'm, I'm also wondering. Uh -huh. Are men to be blamed? Because w women are trying so hard to dress to impress. You see, throughout <laughs> this conversation, uh -huh. we're talking about women dress well, do this with ladies, ladies do this. What about the men? Are men to be blamed here? You just can't close your eyes, Funga Macho, and you focus on beauty that is inward. The brains, the, the brains, the, 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 the tabia. But, but you see now, uh, <laughs> talking about to focus on the tabia, you know, it takes time to know someone's character. It's not instantaneous. It, you don't just meet someone, you know, oh, they're people of integrity. It takes time to know them. I, but you see, uh -huh. men, we are not very patient. Uh. We are very. Um, 
<laughs> we are very microwave. Huh? We just want to n things pop. Huh? Quick, quick. So we, we don't take time to uh, know the person, and that's why we always get drawn by what we see at first. Men judge first by visual, then try to justify what they saw using other reasons. Sh shouldn't men change that particular uh, approach? I, I, think, I think men should change that approach if they want to have good relationships. Because you cannot judge someone on how good they will be as a wife based on how they're dressed. That we are, because they are putting on long skirts, they are not having makeup, they'll make <laughs> a good, good wife. Yeah, you cannot, you, it's so hard to judge on that. And that is why I think it goes, that, that's why I think it, it takes time for you to know someone beyond their dress. And I think men, we have to go beyond the looks. Correct. We have to go beyond the looks. Men need to change how we look they at say, things. First, in, <laughs> it's uh, love at first sight, huh? Uh, we need to have second, third, and fourth sight. Because <laughs> first sight is very deceptive I at have, some extent. I, I have a personal belief that love is, not blind. love is not blind. No, no, love is not blind. And if love is blind, then marriage is an eye opener. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. It's, it's not blind. Love has eyes, can read between lies, identify a lie, and fly away like a butterfly. Uh, Pastor, there's so many things you've not touched on. I want us to, 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 to talk on uh, the perspective of culture. Uh -huh. Different cultures have different beliefs, mm -hmm. and they have different belief systems that, at the end of the day, um, influence how they handle each other. Mm -hmm. You give two very good examples, and I love what you said. One, mm -hmm. you compared the Kenyan culture yeah. with the South, South African, African culture. culture. Mm. In South Africa, they have the way they dress. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what, what tribe that is. I'm trying to remember that's the name of this particular uh, uh, social group. Um, I can't remember. I, I, it says, I don't know if it's an S or a T. Yeah. So, th th and, and there is a way they are. Mm -hmm. they, they only they cover, just cover the front. You know, uh. the, the, the front, the, you know. Mm. But in Kenya, we have yet another type of culture mm. that is different. How do we balance all these cultures mm -hmm. so that we embrace one another mm -hmm. and have f uh, uh, a strong relationships? Mm. And I think when it comes to uh, modesty in, in itself, we have to, one, understand the cultural context. Because the way I'll dress in Kenya is not necessarily how I'll dress in South Africa. Yeah. Or let's live alone South Africa, let's go abroad. Uh, the way I dress in Kenya is not how I'll dress in the U.S. Even Nigeria, for Even example. Even Nigeria, for example. Yeah. So now, when it comes to modesty, we have to understand what is deemed as modest within a particular culture. Mm -hmm. If I go to the Maasai's and I'm putting on a suit, I may be looked at as funny. Because this is not culturally viable within that context. Mm -hmm. So when I go to the masses, I'll put on a shuka and I'll be so okay and people will not look at me funny. So the culture dictates what will I put on in oh, a particular oh, place. Oh, oh. So when I go to the Zulu, this, uh, I don't know if it's the Zulus, or, uh, the, the, there's a particular uh, 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 community in, in uh, South Africa that literally covers the, the vitals, if I may call them that. They literally ca cover the vitals, the, the sensitive parts of, of, of a human being. And if I go there with my suit, I will look like an outcast because this is not what is culturally viable within mm -hmm. this context. But, but, but then how do you balance? Because um, you're going in a foreign place, uh -huh. or let's say the foreign place has come to where you are. Uh -huh. <laughs> How, how do you balance as a Christian? How do you balance as a Christian? As a Christian, the Bible says we're supposed to be as wise as, uh, as, wise as serpents and as harmless as doves. So wisdom calls uh, for you to understand the cultural context mm. of where you are. So yeah. as a Christian now, if I go to preach probably in, <laughs> in uh, those tribes that only cover the vitals, Paul says I, uh, to them, I, I, be I became like them so that I can win them. So when I go there, I will not go with my suit. Mm. Because the context within that culture dictates differently. So we can't be rigid. That no, you this cannot is be rigid. So, yeah, and I think we'll, yeah, and I think we'll only be fair when you're talking about modesty when you look at it from a cultural context. Mm. We cannot have a, a blanket perspective on culture. We have to understand that culture is defined within the context. But can that affect the pulpit, the, the church? Pulpit. Yeah, now, when talking about now, now this is the church culture. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the pulpit, it's, it's a different ballgame all by itself. Now, let's talk about the pulpit in Kenya. Mm -hmm. There's a defined dress code. When you go to the book of the Old Testament, the priest had defined dress code, huh? whereby even God gave the colors and the measurements. Because he knew that when you're the pulpit, the main business of the day is to worship God. Mm -hmm. That is the main business. And to keep focus on worship. But now if you walk into that space whereby this is expected uh, to happen there, then you come in a way that distracts, then it's not really welcome because it is not what is 
allowed within that particular setting. Yeah. For example, we live in a time whereby, uh, even in the praise and worship, you find uh, some of our sisters in Christ are putting on some very tempting and very distracting uh, dressing, dress codes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know if you've been there. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you go to church and you're like, wow, am I huh? still in church? And I think now that comes down to um, um, uh, what, is, what is the occasion? Is, is, is it that the, the um, modernization is affecting the church or what is it that we're looking into here? Because now these ladies will come and they are, they are, uh, uh, and they will look so beautiful in heels. Oh, yeah. Heels. And wakitembea from uko nyuma, then the, the way, you know, knock, 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 you know, the, 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 as they walk, tap, yeah, yeah. tap, 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 tap to tap. the front, mm -hmm. you, you, you'll be left... You'll yeah. definitely be distracted. Men are visual beings. Oh, yes. And, 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 he, and, and he's still visual. And, and let me, let me, <laughs> he's still visual. What are the visual? Yeah, he's still, yeah, definitely. And one thing we have to understand, in, in as much as we want to be spiritual, huh, the flesh does not get saved. Your feelings don't get saved. The flesh doesn't get saved. So we still have uh, the human aspect of us, the, the visual part of us. Uh, we are still provoked by what we see as, as, as men. And I think also ladies do. Uh, yeah. But now the diff there's a dif the difference in degree when it comes to men and, and women. So now when it comes to the church, uh, we have to just understand uh -huh. that this is not the place for this dressing. I think that settles this. Uh, con like it's, this is not the place. Like dress in a way that is not distracting. And I know we all know what is distracting. In as much as you try to assume that we don't know, even the lady dressing like that, she knows uh. that this one will get their heads uh. turning. She definitely knows. In as much as she may not admit, she knows. And uh, God forbid that uh, she has uh, an intention of distracting the man of God or probably someone <laughs> in the church. <laughs> and that is why you see men of God are today caught up in all these sex scandals. Because the temptation I in the house of God is so intense too that much. the grace of God cannot sustain their peace in their pants. I, I don't know if it's too. I, I don't know if it's higher than uh, than the club or what, but I, yeah, there's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a pleasure. I w w once went to uh, uh, to the service whereby yeah. uh, you could almost you see these see-through uh, dresses. There. You could almost see everything from, you know, we have the lights. Nowadays we have lights. Huh? Oh, yeah, we have these lights. Because and of through, cameras. Yeah, cameras and, and lights. Yeah, yeah. So th this lady was dressing as see-through. And you could literally, you didn't need no discernment or you power of imagination to see what was behind the dress. And I also saw this uh, man of God. He had his trousers right at his butt cheeks. You could see uh, the boxers. Wow. And I was like, wow. Sagging? Yes, definitely sagging. And you know we have these yo-yo preachers. Oh, sorry, I don't know if yo-yo is the right word to use <laughs> on, on this show. And you know we have these preachers who have, uh, they come uh, with sagged trousers and open uh, button. and button, dot com. Dot com and uh, button. And this uh, is the culture that we're living in. But as Christians, what defines our culture is not the trends. Uh, it is the word of God. <laughs> let, me, let me go to Facebook. Uh -huh. um, wow, well, people, people are commenting. Uh, Felix and GB, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I and the son. Oh, the son. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. They're the ones who just cover the vitals. Yeah, thank you, Felix. Thank you, Felix. And I'm following the conversation. Cracks blaze and I'm at dressed to kill. <laughs> who died when Jesus is alive? And since they started dressing to kill, how many have died? They should start saving the money and start up a business. Yeah, yeah, you know, dressing to kill has, uh, churches are full of serial killers today. Uh, hmm. We have a lot of serial killers in our, in our pulpits and in our podiums and, and, and our churches uh, who dress to kill. And when you're talking about dress to kill, I don't believe it means it in its literal sense. Huh? Hmm. It means to kill the of moral course. conviction. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, because one thing about men is that uh, because we're visual, what we see impact us in different ways. And because now I cannot get the lady that uh, uh, provoked me sexually, mm. that pushes me to a different area of compromise, probably. Now, that's why most men, because of, uh, they, 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 they're finding alternative to their craving. That's why most of them are caught up in pornography. They're caught yeah, up in masturbation yeah, because yeah, they're trying yeah. to give a release to a pressure that was imposed on them at a in place that's supposed to be. Yeah. So we, we also need to understand where am I? A, a, a place where you're supposed to get that release, huh? you begin to feel some tension. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, what, what is the problem here? Um, is it that the bishops and the senior pastors are allowing it? Is it the leaders of the praise and worship that are, 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 are allowing such things? Because, wow. 
Hapo ndio kuna shida. Jump up and everything is out. Hapo I mean, <laughs> ndio kuna shida. Most of us will not rukia bwana because we are so limited. Uh, if you rukia bwana then people are going to be shocked mm -hmm. out of their seats. Mm -hmm. So we also need to come back to the clergy class society, the men of God. These men of God have to teach on this. And you know it's a subject that not many men of God will teach on because it's very sensitive. Because uh, maybe 50% of my present worship team dresses like that. So mm. if I talk about this, I'm going to lose my vocalist. And if my vocalist is lost, then what happens to the future of my present worship team? So mm. I think we have to come to a point where by men of God have to understand that this is a healthy conversation mm -hmm. that we need to have, especially now. Mm -hmm. When you live in a time where by casual Fridays have become casual Sundays. This is why we need to have this conversation, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. We are not bashing anybody. We are trying to empower you to know how to handle things. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even let's talk about empowerment and how to handle things. Uh -huh. uh, you said you're married. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, one day we'll have a, a session where you'll talk about how, 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 how it has been <laughs> to advise the youth on marriage. Oh, yeah. A pastor's wife, mm -hmm. together with the pastor, uh -huh. decided to go out and they go to Mombasa. On vacation? On vacation. <laughs> or they, or they come to Mombasa, uh -huh. or to Nairobi, there are some good hotels. Oh, yeah. Have with, yeah. Good swimming pools. Mm -hmm. The bikini. <laughs> wow. My goodness. And then to Navarra, and I say, they don't have a pasi. <laughs> wow. Huh? Na bikini. Uh-huh. And then they were like, wow. <laughs> that is not right. Some will say, that is okay. Mm -hmm. Some will say, What's your, what's your take in the, I, I, in think, the um, I think uh, as a man of God, we are held to a different standard. And that is one thing we have to admit. Uh -huh. As a man of God, I'm held on a different standard. That means that how people look at me is very different to how they look at a, a congregant. So as a man of God, there's a standard I'm supposed to uphold. Mm. And when it comes to modesty, there's a standard I'm supposed to uphold. But that does not mean that I go on vacation in Mombasa with my suit. Of course I won't, in as much as I will want to appear spiritual, saved, and going to heaven on first class, there's a way I will not go to, uh, <laughs> to Mombasa in my suit, or in my robe, uh -huh. for that matter. Uh -huh. I will get there, then I'll put on my nice shirt, and I'll put on my nice beach vest, and my wife also there will be in her, in her nice things. Uh, uh, that I, I, even as a pastor, should you be in your shorts? Oh, definitely. As a man of God? Oh, yes, I should, but now the question, now this one now, it gets tricky. I should be in my shorts, and my wife should be in her, in her whatevers, but now, the expo uh, uh, how are we, uh, how, who are we letting into this audience? Because there are those who go on this beach and uh, these vacations, and then they take photos. Mm. And then, <laughs> you know, we live in a social media generation, <laughs> and we want to share every moment. So now, <laughs> we will post them on Facebook. In as much as it was right for me to be on the beach on my shorts, I was not supposed to be in my, in my suit, mm. there's, a, there's a way I cannot share these pictures, because number one, it is going to be offensive to my congregants. And number two is going to compromise my standing as a man of God. So don't share this photo. Don't share this photo. There has to be a limit. That's why now it becomes abuse. A normal use of this. What if it's a, a church event and you are going to retreat? Uh -huh. We're going to a retreat in, uh, in Mombasa. Uh, in Mombasa. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know the best place to go. Uh, <laughs> Nyali. Nya, Nyali. Uh -huh. And then after <laughs> Umefika Uko, uh, you know, people are uh, on my And then you swim. Swim. And Pastor Pia na Tokiana. Na short fear, mama, mama uh, first lady. <laughs> we call them first ladies nowadays. Eh? First lady, I'm talking na na yake pia. Na, na yake apo wo, apo wo ni to kufu na na vitu zingine. Yeah. And it, it actually happens. And I think in that context, ah, uh, now this one now uh, the occasion now now it brings me now to the occasion. Uh. Yeah. This is the occasion for this dress code. But it, as much as this is the occasion for this dress code, it doesn't yeah. have to be to the extreme. There has to be a limit to it. Whereby, if I dress like this, uh, in as much as the, it's the occasion that calls for it, uh, there has to be a limit to how much <laughs> I can expose mm. as the bishop or the pastor or as the man of God for that particular uh, time. So it has, it comes to the limit. Now, le 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 let me and I think it loses, it loses the balance whereby now we share these uh, not so godly pictures on social media, uh. and I think that calls for wisdom. Now, you don't share everything on social media. Which brings me back uh -huh. to, uh, oh, yeah, bef before that, uh, uh -huh. I'm seeing uh, <laughs> there's somebody who is saying, Ati, whose fault is it if people are distracted? Uh -huh. <laughs> because the issue of, be, be, because this issue is an issue of gender, uh -huh. Don't every, doesn't everyone have values? 
I think the man is justif is uh, justifying the. Uh, I, I think we are trying to justify the way men act. Uh -huh. I can dress how I deem fit. Whoever is distracted is misplaced in church. And uh, and that person is very very right. Okay. The Bible does not give uh, does not talk about modesty in view of how a man reacts when he sees too much of a woman's skin. Mm. That is one thing we have to understand. It doesn't. It does not, the Bible does not define modesty based on ma a man's reaction to a woman's mm -hmm. dressing. Uh -huh. How does it define So that? modesty is not motiv motivated by what a man will see and be attracted to. It, it, it's defined by uh, what mm -hmm. is right. For example, it's, it's important for women now to understand that. They have the first thing that women need to understand is the visual aspect of men. That mm -hmm. is one thing. Right? You have to understand, number one, that men are visual. And now understanding that men are visual, we have to, the Bible says we should be our brother's keeper. I don't know why it says brothers, not sisters. I'll beg to ask her. Huh? The Bible because says we should the, be... The brothers are the brothers, the ones huh? who are... The, the ones who need, uh, keep, uh, uh, <laughs> they need to be <laughs> kept. Huh? Yeah. Uh, the Bible says that be our brother's keeper. And now, for me to be your keeper, I have to understand you. I have to understand what ticks you off. So because I want to be your keeper, I have to understand what is your area of weakness. So if, if, if uh, the issue is that, so uh -huh. men, meaning women should dress in reference or in consideration of men. men. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So because you know that they are visual, you have to dress in consideration of them. And okay. there are also those men, huh? in as much as you may be in a long dress, that those men who still have sexual thoughts. I don't know if you know that. Uh. That those who see you naked even in a, in a robe. Uh, 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 Pastor, <laughs> time is not on our side and I really wanted us to touch on this. Um, I want to talk about this. Modest in terms of our, our, speech. our, our speech. Yeah. Brief, briefly, quickly. A modest in terms of our speech is just being careful on, in our choice of words. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what language are you using within what context? Mm -hmm. There's a language I'll use in church that I will not use outside there. Yes. So modest in terms of speech is understanding your language, your choice of words based on the context or the place where you are. So when it comes to modesty, also we have modesty in speech, whereby your words has to be within a given context. Is the language used here uh -huh. in, at work is not the language you use outside Is, is sharing improper or indecent in church? No, it's not. Uh, sharing is not improper or indecent in church. It's a means of communication. And you're communicating, you're communicating to a particular, uh, particular age group. Huh? The, 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 there's an age group now that uh, is very fluent with Shenga. Mm -hmm. And I even thank God because we have some Sheng Bible studies. I don't know if you've heard of. Yeah, I have. have a, I, I, like I, a, I, I tried attending <laughs> one, but I didn't understand anything. So, so I you left. see, <laughs> and I think that they're trying to reach a given group of people because yeah. uh, if language is a barrier, then let's look for a way to get to them. The Bible says that how will they hear unless someone okay. speaks and how will they speak unless they've been sent? So I think uh, there's a language for a particular context. All right. Yeah. Um, so Sheng is not bad. One thing that I love is a uh, uh, pastor here uh, has a book. Eric Baraza has a book, Naked But Not Ashamed. Ashamed. Powerful book here. Powerful book here. You make sure that, uh, when did you uh, release it? Uh, I think it's uh, two weeks now. Okay. Yeah, two weeks now. It's, uh, it's just new now. It's mm -hmm. two weeks. Naked But, but Not Ashamed. ashamed. Um, we'll, we, 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 thank you so much, Pastor Baraka for Baraza for, for joining me today. It's been an honor. It's an honor. It's a I, pleasure. I should invite you again. <laughs> you again. should. Huh? And you, I'll be glad to be back here. Don't you just love this guy? Yeah? <laughs> he has uh, really... <laughs> people are smiling here in studio. <laughs> I want us to bring this conversation to a close. Uh -huh. And I'm going to end with a quote. Tell me what you think. Do you agree with this or not? Well, modesty isn't about hiding your body. It's about revealing your dignity. Amen. Wow. Couldn't have been better than that. <laughs> that should close the show now. That should close the show. <laughs> close Thank the you show so now. much for being part of today's <laughs> show. This is Power Talk. A big thanks to Dr. Baraza. Big thanks to each and everyone that ensures today's show was a success. My name is Ram Aguko, and this is Power Talk.